uh, authentication and part two is going to be authorization. What are you allowed to do? So the first thing is we actually have to log in to see what we are allowed to do and then we can discuss what we want the user to be able to do and what the user quote unquote will be authorized to do. So uh, we finish users new and what we want to do is first be able to log in. So what would the route be here? Come on, I helped y'all out already. Let's log in. Very good. This mysterious stranger will be helping us a lot today. All right, so this slash login path, I'm going to check the routes for you. Bloop, 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 bloop. Is all, it's just a get to login. All right, and what login will do if we want to be able to persist the user is this data must go from request to request. If it wants to go just one request, we know that we can use a flash hash. If it wants to go for multiple requests, then we should be using a session. So in theory, when you are actually logging in, what you're really doing is starting a new session, right? Or at least adding to the session that already exists with that user's information. So my thought was, what controller should we make this? I don't think whether or not the user's logged in should go into the user class, it should go into this session class. So I made a separate sessions controller. And if I'm going to log in and I'm making a brand new session when the person logs in, the controller action I chose was new. So in the sessions controller, I'm making a brand new session when the user logs in. So naturally in the sessions controller, I'm just going to go bloop, 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 bloop. Controller, bless up to, oh, that's embarrassing. Sessions controller, it hits this new. And new, just like with anything else, is just the form. And this is just going to render new. Will it work this way? Chet, you betcha. Right? So either way, good to go. So in the new page, I literally just have a login. And let's take a look at that login. So sessions controller new plus up to that fuzzy search. It's just a form tag. Why do I need the form tag and not a form four? Right. I heard a lot, right? There's no instance, I don't have the variable, all of which are basically correct. The idea is that I can't use a form for because I have nothing there to make a form for. There's no object. So I have to just create a form. So I'm using the form tag. And it's gonna go to the login path. So just like I had to get to slash login will give me this page. I'm gonna make a post to slash login that's gonna give me the create that actually creates the session. And in that creation of the session, I'm going to have to first make sure, hey, are you who you say you are? Because whatever I type in here, all right, if I type in like ye for cheats, all right, I have to make sure, hey, is there a user in there? And is their password yeats for cheats? So let's just make a brand new person. So let's make users new, all right? Does anyone wanna be a user in this particular application? Okay, Randy, all right? And Randy's password is one, wow, powerful. All right, so when I create this user, hey, take him right to Flavortown, all right? Username, Randy, very good. So now I know I have Randy as my username, and I have a mm, password. So let's do this. Let's go to slash login. Let me use Randy. And I'm gonna put uh, one, two, three, four. Very good. Bloop. Wow, amazing. Takes me right to that particular user. So this is what actually needs to happen. When the user types in something, first thing is you have to find whether or not that user exists in the database. Right? We know Active Record has some sort of method that allows you to find. So let's take a look at what post to slash login does when I actually hit the login button. If we take a look at the routes, which is the first thing you should look at, that's not the right one. It's going to be post to routes, post to login, hits the session controller, hits the create action. So in the sessions controller, embarrassing. In the sessions controller, I hit the create, which was the post to slash login. I'm gonna leave all this code up for you. So I wrote a bunch of notes for you, right? So, First thing is I have to find the user. That's the first thing I have to do. Because if I don't find the user, how can I check if their password's correct? All right. 
What's the difference between find and find by? Let's take a look. We have a terminal here. I can easily close out the server, go into my Rails console and show you, or I can split the plane or vertically or horizontally. So I'm going to split horizontally. Wow, amazing. Please be amazed. Gasp. All right, Flatiron School, and you are Dumbo. That's not the one. Uh, what are you? 10, 28? Cool. And we're in the Rails all. Great. Rails C. So I don't actually have to cancel my server. I can run two separate instances at the same time. So I can. Thank you for that. Wow. <laughs> I needed that. So the idea is if I did user.all. Cool. Look at that. Saved in my database as a hash file string. Amazing, except for one user who will be nameless. Now, if I do user.find, and I gave it an ID of uh, 2 is my first one. Cool, that exists, yeah? Great. If I do user.find, I'm sorry, is this bad? Is that more better? If I use user.find by with the ID of 2, what happens? Same thing. Now, let's do user.all. What's the last user in my database? Uh, user 11. Right? Uh, actually, how can I find the last user in my database? Smart, right? It's 16. It's embarrassing. <laughs> so, do I have a user 17? Negative Batman. If I do user.find by ID 17, will I find anything? No, nil. What if I did user.find with 17? What would happen? Absolutely not. It breaks. So if you don't want your app to break, you should be using find by, and that's important because what happens when a user tries to log into your app? Sometimes you might have hack sores, or you might have people like me who type really fast and make a bunch of typos. So if I'm trying to log in as Wangtron 3000 and I put Wangtron 300, do I want the app to crash? No, I want it to return nil, like, hey, that doesn't work, I didn't find anything. So find by definitely is the move here but it also allows you to find by username because nobody logs in by their ID, right? You ever go to Twitter and just be like, oh, let me log in real quick. 8675309. Okay, one, nice. And so, all right, we're back. So, <laughs> you gotta be on when you're lecturing, you know? Uh, so cool, find by, right? And the difference between find and find by. Now, the next thing is this like really cool, sexy piece of code here and I will show you something. Find by will either be a user object or nil. That's what we just discovered. Now, what we want to do is we want to make sure, first of all, does the user exist, right? So we use find by, that's gonna be the user or nil. We have to check that first, and then if that person exists, we want to authenticate them with that method that we built, all right? That's gonna take in the plain text password. Now, this is very important because this is the long way to do it. Boop, 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 boop. Right? If at user.exists, or you could just do at user, then only if the user exists, if again at user.authenticate, right? Plain text password, which is, we all know. No bueno, right? We don't want to do that. I can do if user and then if again and nest these if statements. And I can write it like that. Or I can write it this way. And here's why. Ruby, like me, is very lazy. And I'll explain. All right? If I have a true statement and a true statement, what will happen? For true, right? If I have a true and a false statement, what will I get? If I get true and false, I get true? False, right? What if I take a string 
and and false. What is the string's true fee value? I get false. Now, here's the thing. If I get, if this is true and this is true, it's true. If it's true and false, it's false. If it's true and false, it's false. Now, what if I put a variable that doesn't exist, all right? Like, so for example, true, actually, let's do a variable that doesn't exist. Randy, you're a variable that does not exist. I'm sorry. What happens when I try to run Randy? Sorry. If I try to execute the code, Randy as a variable, I know, this always gets dicey. Uh, it says, hey, it's undefined. So if I put something like true and, and the variable Randy, what will happen? It's going to run true, and then it's going to check, hey, what is the value of Randy? And it will break. If I put false and, and Randy, it will run false, and then just stop because it's lazy. The and and operator says both sides must be true. If I already know the first half is false, I literally don't care what's on that side because it doesn't matter. It's already false. The whole statement's false. Does that make sense? It's V lazy. Let's take advantage of that power. So instead of this, right, which was uh, not the best user experience, I'm trying to have fun for me. Cool. So at user, if I don't find the user, if I type in Wangtron 300, which is not a user that exists in my database, it winds up being nil, which is what find by returns. If nil, will the second half run? No, because nil is falsy. So that's the power of the and and, and it must be in this order, right? If I do at user dot authenticate first, and user is nil, it's going to be like undefined method authenticate for nil nil class. You can start to see through and read. Cool. All right. In which case, then I need to log in the user. Now, what login user is doing is essentially, I'm going to create this session. Session at a key of user ID with my user ID, because I've, authent I've authenticated. This person actually is who they say they are. Their username is correct, and their very super secure password was also typed in correctly. So I'm going to make this session. That way, the person is available to me globally in my application. because they're, they're tracked now by the session. So anytime I send a new request, the session's in the cookie, it goes through. And it comes back, the session comes back in the cookie, still tracking that user. Click the next link, still tracking the user. Click the next link, still tracking the user. What's up? What's up? Yes. So, now, this right here I'm just going to use because in my application controller, bloop, well, that didn't work out as well as I wanted to. I just have login user and it's the exact same piece of code. That's just one abstraction. And normally I'd like walk you through it and stuff, but like for this class I think you want just the information. So with the sessions controller, I'm just going to call login user, which is, again, the same. Once I've logged in, it says, bam, you have to let the user know something happened. It's like, hey, you've logged in successfully. Then I'm just going to redirect to the user, which is what you saw, right? Once I logged in, it was like, hey, at Flavortown, Randy. Otherwise invalid username and password. Do I want to include details in here? Hey, your username's correct, but your password's off by two characters. Do you want to tell the user details about what's going on? No, this is specifically generic. 
and it's generic on purpose. And what I want to do is, where do I want to push them if their password's bad? All right, right back to the login page. Because if you didn't log in successfully, what do you want to see? The home page, or do you want to see the login page again? You're like, ah, oh, my B. I should uh, type that in correctly. And so that's really what's happening. The idea is this, if I'm trying to log out, that's an easy thing to do. All I need is a button somewhere that says, yo, log out. How am I tracking the user? Inside the session. You're tracking the user inside the session, very good. And so all I have to do to delete the user from the session is go inside the session, find the key of user ID, and blast it. The question is, how do I hit this controller action? What do I need to do? What controller action is this? Inside the sessions, the action of destroy. So first thing I want to look at is inside my routes file, I need to hit session destroy. Wow, what a beautiful route. If I'm going to destroy something restfully, it should be the delete method. And the route, should it be delete slash login? No. It could be anything I want. It could be erase me if I wanted it to be. But the idea is you can make whatever you want. That's why the custom routes become important. Notice how just trying to log in, creating this session, it cannot and should not follow RESTful conventions exactly. RESTful conventions are great as a baseline so everyone understands because when you first saw it, you're like, oh my god, that makes sense. Because it follows a RESTful pattern, but it is not perfectly RESTful because I can't do resources sessions. Because if I do resources sessions, it will give me a get to slash sessions. And is that the route that you want for your users to log in? If you were about to log in and you saw something like, hey, facebook.com slash sessions, you'd be like, that was weird. You want it to be like, facebook.com slash login. So custom routing becomes so important. You have to understand it. Hit the route, hit the controller action, then let the controller action do the logic. How do we feel about understanding the logout button? Because all you have to do now is make a button in your HTML that needs to hit what route? A delete to slash logout. Right? Nailed it. And we know how to do that, right? Inside the button to, method delete, and then slash logout. Exactly. Proud of you. Cool. So that's login and that's logout. Now let's talk about what you are authorized. The idea for authorization is that when I first log in and I see good old Randy here, who's user 16, can I go to user 2? Michael, hey! That's a bad user experience, right? Should Randy, user 16, be authorized to see all these other pages? No, but it gets even more sketch. Check it out, ready? I'm gonna hit this back button. Oh, again, user 16, Randy. Let's see a very common feature come into play. What, what, what page is this? Slash user slash 16? The show page. So users show. And all I want to do is maybe add a, whoop, sorry, I wanted to display a button to, we talked about this, a button to what? Delete. Yo, that got real dicey real quick, right? Delete. And it's going to go to something like slash users slash delete with a method of delete. Uh, delete. I think delete is the HTTP verb, destroy is the that yeah, control action, yeah. Cool. Let's take a look. Oop. Gasp! Delete is there. Wow. Thank you. I should be able to delete me as the logged in user, but should I be able to delete my good boy Michael? 
Am I authorized to do that? Maybe you could just see these people's show pages, right? Here on Instagram, right? I'm logged in. I can look at other people's feeds. I can look at other people's pictures, unless it's private, which in case you're not authorized, and we can talk about that later. But generally, if they're public accounts, I can just click and see them. But should I be able to just delete them? Like I have an angry ex-girlfriend or something, and I'm like, you know what? Forget this person, and I'm gonna just log into my Instagram account and delete their account. <laughs> <laughs> Negative Batman. I should not be authorized to do that. So the idea is somewhere in your application you have to prevent that person from being able to delete other people. What is their authorization? The only way you can do that is you have to know who's logged in. Because right now I'm on this page, right? If you just walked in on this page, who's logged in right now? It's Randy, but how do you know that? Sessions. Right, you can track it through the sessions. You can do in the code user, I mean session colon user ID and like that's the person. So the idea is somewhere here is boop, boop, if, right, the at user dot ID, this particular person is actually equal to the session at a key of user ID, that's the person who should be able to see it. So boo boo, let me fix that right there. So if I refresh, gasp, gone. However, who's logged in? Your boy, and it's there. Gasp. <gasps> <laughs> We're getting better? So much better. <laughs> That's the idea. And this if statement is a condition, which means that if something renders, it renders conditionally. So we talked about something called conditional rendering. And all that is is a slap on an if statement. I only want something to show up if something is true. And that is whoever's logged in should be the person to see this. Cool. How do we feel about conditional rendering? Cool? Awesome. Now sorry, what's up? if I go to my cookies and I change the my ID User ID to someone else's Let's take a look. I'm gonna say, oops, embarrassing. Yep, yeah. Let's try to see if we can, in fact, do that. I'm in local 3000. Let's take a look at what information inside the session you can change. It's encrypted. You shouldn't be able to just manipulate that, and that's why it's it's hashified. But this is what, in fact, keeps track of you. Because what if I deleted the cookies? Who's logged in? Nobody, because the session got blasted. So session at a key of user ID is, in fact, nil. Yeah? That's why when it's like, oh my god, you should clear your cookies, and you're like, dang it, I got to log into Gmail, I got to log into my bank, I got to log into Hotmail, which I definitely still use. Right? You have to log into everything again, because your cookies held your sessions, which held your value pairs, which said whether or not you were logged in and you were authenticated. Cool? Does it all make sense? Is it all coming together? The internet. <laughs> all right. Cool. So that's the conditional rendering. But it still doesn't solve the problem of this idea that you need to be able to keep track of the current person that's logged in. This is actually who the current person that's logged in, all right? So in terms of the logic for my entire application, in the idea of controlling my entire application, I should probably keep track of the user there. Not inside the hamburger controller, not inside the sessions controller, but the controller that everything inherits from. So I just made a current user is going to be user.findby the session at a key of user ID. That's who's currently logged in. All right? If I, in fact, have a session at a key of user ID, I should be able to find that user. So right now, it's 16. So user.findby with ID 16 gives me the Randy user object. This is more powerful than just the number of session at a key of user ID, which is just a number. So what I can do 
is I can go refactor my code and in my show, instead of this, I can go, oh, current user. But I'm comparing at user ID, so I can do this, or I can do this. That code's mo better, right? If this user is the current user, then show the delete button. The code is just more readable. In my application controller, current user. If I want to be able to use, so right here, this is a helper method coming from an application controller. If I want to be able to use methods in my view fit file, I have to specify them using helper method. If I don't put this in here, I cannot use these methods inside the view folder, inside the view fa files. Okay. Now, we talked about login user, we talked about current user. Now we have to figure out whether or not somebody's even logged in. Because when the app first starts, is somebody logged in? No. But somewhere along the line, somebody logs in, maybe they log out, somebody else logs in, somebody else logs out. You have to know whether or not somebody's logged in at any given time. You have to keep track of this. And the way we do it is, if somebody's logged in, that means that there is, in fact, a current user. That's just good logic. All right? If there's no current user, then nobody's logged in. Let's talk about this piece of sexy code right here. Let's go back to the console, right? True is true, my God. Not true is in fact false. Not, not true, guess what? True again. What about not the string A? False. So what is, oops, that's fine. What is not not the string A? True. You can force any truthy value to return its Boolean equivalent by using this bang bang operator, Jesse J. If you put bang bang, thank you. When I take things, I say, give me that, Chris Brown. Uh, bang bang will force, the, the correct terminology is bang bang will coerce any value to its Boolean equivalent. Bang bang will take any value and coerce it, force it, to be its Boolean equivalent. So if I have a current user, or I don't have a current user, I don't like saying this, but there's no real way to get around it. But if I bang bang current user, there's no way to get around it. Then it will tell me whether or not somebody's actually there. So if I use this magical question mark, what should this method return? A Boolean. I don't know, I shouldn't let, sorry. It's me, I'm the <laughs> mysterious stranger. If there's a question mark, if there's a question mark, then it should return a Boolean. And I can coerce and force any value to its Boolean equivalent. Right, learning all the tricks, tricks and tricks. You know what I'm saying? Showed you some memorization, showed you some lazy, Ruby action, I showed you some bang bang action. This lecture's full of good, chock full of goodness. And then finally, the idea is, we talked about authentication, and now we're finally gonna get to authorization. What are you authorized to do? Now the idea is this, I can in fact shut my app down, because nobody should be able to do anything in my app unless they're logged in, all right? Unless, and this took me an unnecessary amount of time to learn, and I'm gonna simplify it for you. Unless is exactly the same as if not logged in. These two are exactly the same. <laughs> like, it, I don't know why, this took me months to understand. I feel very, very smart for not making this connection. The idea is, if you're not logged in, I don't want you to do anything. You're not authorized. But you can also phrase it, unless you're logged in, I don't want you to be able to do anything. 
the English works both ways. Cool? But it was like a nice way for me to sneak in to teach you one less. Okay. Goes, goes unappreciated, but that's fine. Just kidding. I know you appreciate it. It's just a lot of information. So the idea is that unless you're logged in, I'm going to say, hey, you got to log in to use my app or use this page. So where should I take them to? Correct. The idea is that I want to take them to the login path if they're not logged in. Right? When someone starts my app super fresh and they go, oh, I know how this app works. Let me go to user slash 16. I want to go, you know, dog, you're not logged in. Slow down, pump the brakes. Go ahead and log in first. I'm going to redirect them to login. Right? So I added logged in to the helper method. And in order for me to call authorize, because I want to invoke this method before every single controller action in my page, in my app, right? So think about this. Let's talk about the user controller. Should I be able to see a show unless they're logged in? Should I be able to destroy unless they're logged in? No, but I skipped a couple things. I get to that. If I wanted to make sure that authorized is called before every controller action, <laughs> there is a helper called before action. If I call before action in my application controller, which every controller inherits, that means that every single controller action, every action, before it happens, will invoke authorized. Let's see how it works. If I try to go to, uh, the fact is I'm logged in, right? Ugh, I'm logged in. Sorry, let's just delete those cookies. All right, let's just prove it. All right, so if I go to 15, I should be able to see this person, user C, very creative name. I want to go into my cookies. And I just want to be last them, and I want to refresh. And it says, rut row, localhost redirected you too many times. Let's take a look at the logs to see what's actually happening. If I go into my Rails, this is what's actually happening. Oh my god, I'm not going to get there. It does this. Uh, OK, I did all that, I did all that. I did all that. I did all that. I showed y'all this. Showed y'all this. Showed y'all this. Okay, here. This is what it is. I tried to make an attempt to get to user 15, right? After I deleted the cookies. So I'm no longer logged in. Then it was like, yo, dog, before you can do that, before you could see users 15, before you could see the show page, it called authorized. And because you weren't logged in, it redirected you to login. So redirect. Status code 300. I started a login. But the problem is, I'm not logged in. So I can't see login. Go ahead and pass go, collect $200. Go to login. But you got to be logged in to see login. And I got to be logged in to see login. So I can't log in unless I've logged. Oh my god. And then look at this on the sidebar right there. So. This is known as a recursive function. It just keeps calling itself. And there is no escape. There is no what is known as the base case. All right, thank you. That is hilarious. So the idea is, long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, we programmers are very lucky now that when a recursive function happens where there is no base case, there is no break, you had to just shut your computer down and restart it. Your computer wasn't smart enough to realize Hey, this is just going to run forever. I'm sorry. Now we have things built in where it's like, hey, did you call that method 8,793 times? Are you trying to call it again? Something's wrong, and it will bust out of it. And so it will save you. But back in the day, it was like, yo, dog, I'm going to run until like 998 million, and your computers just freeze. Do you remember that? Back in like the 80s or 90s? Maybe, maybe not that old, right? But back in the 90s, your computer just freeze. It would just stop working. You're like, we just... Restart it, that's what happened. Dropping gold over here. But either way, what we're trying to do is prevent this authorized on certain pages. The first page that makes sense to prevent 
your login. So let's go to the sessions controller. And I want to make sure that inside of this new, we do not call login. So if before action authorized is always called, I want to prevent that. I want to skip the before action. Look at, oh my god, wow. <laughs> There's a skip before action helper. And I want to skip before action authorized only for new and create. Why new and create? Yeah, like the new is the login form, and then the create actually logs you in and creates the session. All right, so that makes sense for the login. But what about sign up? If I'm trying to make a brand new user, should I be logged in first to make a brand new user? What a terrible user experience. One star. So inside my users controller, I also want to skip before action new and create. Otherwise, I'll hit that implement loop. Cool. I can see the uh, I can see the Sandman sleepy eyes. Yeah. Uh, so what if uh, let's say I'm already logged in? I don't want to use the green to walk all the login. That's a very good question. If I'm already logged in, I don't want to be able to create a new user. Where is the create new user? Huh? Is it create or new that the user will see first when trying to create a user? Cool. Good question. This is not going to work, by the way. I'm just surprised. <laughs> But yeah, the idea is like, you can do anything you want, right? As long as you understand Rails. I, didn't, I don't think I did anything that was like outside your comprehension, your knowledge and mastery of Rails. But that was a very good question. Actually, all the questions are good. But I just want to specifically highlight the fact that if you don't know how to do something, but you understand how Rails works, you can do whatever you like. <laughs> all right, cool. That's all I have for you today.